無益な戦いをするつもりはないそのために得た力だ「トルメンタル」「ゲンテスで死ぬの!」「シエラマ」「ブリーチ」「ブレイブスソース」Alright, what is going on, you guys? This is your boy, the Bass Master, and welcome back to yet another Bleach Brave Souls video. And today, I am back again with yet another tier list. Boy, it's been a long time since I have last done one. The last time I did this type of tier list was when I updated the Camp Fear and Roll tier list and the Thousand Year Blow World tier list one last time after they were pretty much done with making the banners for those specific characters and. Yo, that is crazy. I managed to get 28k views off of that video. Thank you guys. It really does mean a lot. Like, goddamn, it's not every day that I actually get to make videos that gets this many views since my channel is actually quite small. So, like, if we can get this type of view count with this video, it's definitely going to be hella appreciative. But I doubt it's going to happen considering the fact that my channel is quite small and I don't make the same、uh, views as I do with Spiteful Hopes and Out on Yellow. But, like, I do this for the community. I do this because I love making videos on YouTube. So I figure I may as well update the Camp Fernroll tier list, but also introduce the Spirits Are Forever with you characters because they are still novel based banners that we get in the game, and Camp Fernroll is always going to be included in those banners. So I figure it's time to update it and make it a whole brand new novel tier list. Camp Fernroll and Spirits Are Forever with you are all going to be included, and here we have three Spirits Are Forever with you banners. To add to the tier list. But before we get to doing so, let's just go ahead and update the tier list real quick because some changes do need to be made currently. And before we start implementing the changes, I figure I may as well explain how this tier list works again. The way of how it works is that it's categorized from best to worst for all the attributes. For example, power, the left side is the best one and the right side is going to be. The worst one. For example, Shinji is currently the best power unit from that tier list, and the worst one being Neliel, with characters obviously being better than her, but not to the point that it's as great as Shinji. Just to basically use as an example. Power, I think that there is no issue whatsoever. I think most of the community will pretty much agree with how I listed the characters. Like Shinji is still number one, Hikone number two, Ginjo number three. There's no complaints. I think it's fine as is. Technique, on the other hand,、um, this is gonna be very subjective, but honestly, I feel like a change needs to be made. Now, with the introduction of IT, the whole thing of having to use any unit you want, regardless of killer or not, has pretty much been thwarted because of IT. Because in IT, you do need killer. You want a unit that has a very high berserker and can actually clear well, but also do insane amounts of damage. And to this, I have to pretty much rank Halle Bell as the number one tech character right above Mayuri, which is cap for me. But honestly speaking, at this point for IT, I want to have my killer advantage enabled in IT, and I want to be able to do as much damage as possible despite making the run a bit slow. Instead, it's not even gonna make the run slow, it's gonna make the run fast for when a Ronker IT is even a thing. To begin with, because Halle Bell, she can boost and she has a 40% reserver. Like, sure, she may have the lunge and the AoE around her, but like, she's just gonna be pumping out a lot more damage to the point that she's gonna be killing a lot of r o n g e r s compared to Miri. Matter of fact, she's a bit more future proof because she can boost, and having boosters in IT is something that you are going to always want, anyways, if you are even struggling in doing Ultra IT, which is saying a lot. Now, as to whether or not I should also change、uh, Stark's position and place him above Mayuri, it's up to you guys. I'm gonna have to ask you guys about this one because I am quite unsure myself because he's gonna be doing a bit more damage than Mayuri, but keep in mind that he's got Burn and he has no Berserker, and he also has a way worse beam than Mayuri because it's only by 1.5k length. Compared to Miyuri, where he has a 3k length beam, has the revival mechanic on the special, and also has weakening on everything. So, I'm gonna have to ask you guys your opinion on this if you guys think it's justified to leave the ranking as is, or if Stark should be above him. Oh, by the way, I kind of screwed up. I did not leave the tier list as is. Baragon was above、uh, Tsukishima, but let's be honest here. SP units are gonna clear faster than NAV units. 
But anyways, uh, the change that I want to make is rank Sanosuke a bit higher than Charlotte. Now, realistically speaking, Charlotte does have a way more consistent hit than uh, Sanosuke because he has a lunge AoE around him and a full screen third strong attack, but he only has 20% Berserker, uh, weakening with weakened defense, and the thing about him is that he's not going to cover as much range as Sanosuke. He hits a bit less compared to him, and uh, this SA2 is pretty much by far one of the worst ones in terms of the AoE, because like it's the same one as Halibut without the Havoc, but it's split into so many attacks that it's not even funny, and I don't know, I just don't like the SA2 as I normally like it. So Sanosuke, even though he has the very bad shaved 40% mag, it's the old one. Keep in mind, it's not the same as Nini's. It's just going to be helping out a lot with clearing faster and, believe it or not, is also going to be somewhat useful in IT because like... Oh geez, I can't believe I'm actually ranking a unit that has ranged collision better than melee collision. My god. We all thought that this character was going to be great in GQ, but at the end of the day, nobody's using him because we have better characters. But um, yeah, anyways, for speed, uh, I do want to make a change. I'm gonna place Baragan above Aroniero. The reason why is, okay, sure, Aroniero has a full screen third strong attack, but realistically speaking, I'd rather sacrifice the third strong attack for the 900 if it means giving Baragan an extra 20% Berserker, and also if it means getting a better second strong attack, because Aroniero has the same SA2 as the Christmas Momo and the Christmas Soifon. So if you guys actually played as those units, and you guys know you're not gonna like that, then literally, it just goes to show that Baragon is actually gonna be somewhat better despite lacking a bit of range on his SI3 because it's the same second Tron attack that Tokinada, Power Hikone has. The only difference is that he doesn't have Havoc, so it's like the radius, its initial phase is 625 and then just basically diminishes. And uh, yeah, that's all you guys really need to know. Like Baragon, I think he's just gonna be a lot more safer than Aroniero and is actually gonna hit harder than Aroniero for when it comes to IT. Heck, he even has last ditch implemented in his uh, skills. It's just that he doesn't have Havoc to compensate for it. That's my reasoning. If you guys agree, disagree, let me know in the comment section below. Just don't be toxic about it. I respect everyone's opinion. So yeah, let me know. And Kisuke, I'm gonna keep him as is. Like, he may be a no affiliation killer, but realistically speaking, no affiliation killers have become a lot more prevalent nowadays and we do get ITs where no affiliation mobs are a thing so using this Kisuke he is still going to be great matter of fact sometimes we'll even outperform White Day Grimjow just because of the fact that he has the charge SI3 which is going to do insane numbers and be able to clear out way more mobs despite not having any types of status ailments and despite not having havoc so like that is saying a lot. Now, uh, mind here, um, I do want to make a small change, and I do want to buff up Siduchi's position as an actual mind character. I would actually rank her above Zalapro and above Alibel. Now, my reasoning for this is, for starters, this character has a way better first draw attack than Halibel. Now, that being said, she does have a lower Berserker compared to Halibel, where she has 20%, but keep in mind that he has uh, laceration and also, I believe, damage to lacerated enemies by 40%. But the main driving factor is the fact that she has a higher chance of being able to inflict laceration against Soul Reaper mobs. So for when it comes to IT, she is actually going to be very good to use regardless of the fact that she has the 40% mag shave attack. Matter of fact, it's better than Sano's case because it's the new one. It's the same one that Nini, here's Battle Uryu has. And uh, you're just going to be doing very good with this character. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. Despite also having the same SI3 as uh, Canthorn or Grimjow. The good one. Up there. But um, yeah, that's basically the change that I need to make with this tier list. I think I'm leaving Heart as is. Like, I don't think anyone's got a complaint about this whatsoever. But now, it is time to go ahead and start ranking the Spirits are Forever with you characters. So starting off with round one. Uh, Don Kanonji, uh, this character was unfortunately dead on arrival, but he does have the increased status element chance against Arch, Attribute, Hollows, and Aronkra. So for IT, he's actually going to be very great to use, is what I would say if he did not have a dog <laughs> kit, because his SA1 is the 18% max pushback attack, his SA2 is actually 
actually the Shockwave SA2, the same as Thousand Year Blood Warrior Ryukens, and his SA3 is full strain 1200 radius. Now, that being said, he does have a debuff on his special, but even then for GQ, it's like we have better characters that already are going to be doing better than Don Kanonji for when it comes to general guild quests, so it's like. His one and only use in guild quests has pretty much fallen off, with the exception of ranged Hollow Week, and, like, he's only good in epic raids, but that's when he's a bonus, and when he's not a bonus, he's actually pretty crap. So, uh, where would I actually place Don Kanonji? Well, here's where I'm gonna place him. Uh, honestly, I'm just gonna place him above Aura, and that's it now. Again, he does have a higher chance of being able to inflict laceration on everything, but here's the issue. He pushes back way too goddamn much compared to Siruchi where she barely pushes back anything. And yeah, also we'll do crappy damage on his SA1 like This is where I'm just gonna place him just above Aura and I think that's just about it. Like sure, he's the meme of BBS, he has the car going, but I'm being realistic as possible with this ranking because no amount of memes is gonna make me want to place him above Hikone, which is saying a lot. And now at number two, spirits are forever with you, Uryu. Now this character, like Don Kanonji, uh, he did get a bad treatment, but unlike Don Kanonji, he actually does have value, and that is being a Technique Link Slot Potion character, since we don't have too many of those for tech, but that's just about it. That is the only value I'm going to give him, because tech is still weak for when it comes to Link Slot Potion characters, because if we compare this character to, per se, the likes of Swimsuit Retsu, Spirits Are Forever With You, Shinsui, uh, he was given a very crappy treatment, because for starters, the SA1 is the same as and Vieta. His SA2 is a literal crawling vortex, and his SA3 is a uh, full screen, and keep in mind that he doesn't have guard break, he only has 20% havoc with Berserker at 20%, so like, not even 40% Berserker to make up for the fact that he has this kind of crappy kit, and it's not the best, really. That being said, he does have increased status ailment chance against speed attribute hollows, so he does have that going for him, but we have Machine Society uh, Nemu for that, so... But that being said, this character is still 10 times better than Kenpachi, so where I'm gonna rank him is pretty much obvious. Like, I'm just gonna place him above uh, Kenpachi and just call it a day, really. Like, if he had the same kit as uh, Miyuri or Stark, I would actually place him right above here if he had that kind of kit, but unfortunately, he doesn't. Why does Caleb always shaft this type of Uryu with this type of hairstyle? I just don't understand, like, Fierce Battle Uryu is still the best Uryu that we have in the game. No cap. Up next, we have the round two characters, and we have ourselves Inyusai Shigekuni Yamamoto. Now, this character is one of the best PvP characters that we have in the game, because he has so much things going for him, because he has Flurry, he has a 20% Brewer, he has Brave Battle Invincibility, but can also ignore Brave Battle Invincibility against the likes of Yugram and Tsukishima, so bye bye Yugram, and also has Last Ditch Survival at 100%, and can also prevent Brave Battle Healing, while also having both Weakening and Burn on all of his attacks. This character right here is the ultimate PvP character, and is by far the most toxic of all the PvP characters that we have in the game. No character can literally come close to beating him, unless you have, per se, a max transcended uh, Kantra no Noitora with 300 defense and literally defense built out the ass just to basically counter this Yamamoto. And even then, if you have a max transcended Yamamoto, that Noitora basically says bye bye because this character is freaking toxic as hell. But since this tier list is mainly meant for PvE, I unfortunately cannot really classify him any higher on the tier list because he has Stern Ritter Killer, for starters. No long range, no guard break, no type of better kit, and the funny thing is that he has the best kit in the game. By that, I mean he has a lunge, he has the 800 AoE in front of him, and then the full screen third strong attack, as you guys can see from the overall data sheet right here. His kit is good. Like, if you ask me, I wish he were an SP character, but at the same time, why did they not make this character like Camp Terminal Tsukishima where he was at least given long reach and also was given a great kit to 
be able to even use him in PvE, because, like, Tsukishima plays exactly like Weaken and is very good for PvE and also has Drain, like, it's just the fact that Tsuki is a better character than Yamamoto in PvE, and it's like, what? I just don't understand K-Lab, and to be honest, I don't like any of these PvP-only type of characters because they are only going to be using it in PvP, and every single other game mode that we have in the game, he is completely dog crap. I'm sorry, but it's just the facts. He is dog crap, and where I'm going to place him is just above Yami. That's it, because he has a better nat string than him. He has a better hit than him, so for guard breaking, he's actually going to be pretty good, but he is not going to be better than the likes of Kanthrum or Grimjow. Tokinada, and he's not gonna be better than Spirit Society Chad. I'm sorry, but like, this is where I'm gonna classify Yamamoto. All right, now we're finally gonna be getting to the good characters. Up next is the Spirits Are Forever With You version of Shunsui, and this character, oh my god, I love his design, but he is also very stacked in terms of attacks, stats, and skills, because for starters, he is a Link Slot Potion character, just like Kisuke. Now, if you have Kisuke, you don't really need this character, but as an actual unit that has a Soul Reaper killer, if you don't have Daddy Ichigo or Noel, this is literally the third best option that you could possibly ask for, because he has Frenzy plus one, Guard Break, Havoc at 20%, Berserker 40%, with weakening on everything, and not to mention, he also has Innervator, which is basically going to allow him to inflict weakening every five seconds, and also is immune to weakening. And in terms of overall kit, is also pretty damn good, like, I would argue to say that this is the best Shinsui that we have in the game, because he has the same SA1 as the 6th Anniversary Aizen, so it's a 3k length beam with a 1020 width. Now, the SA2 is a bit of a bummer, because it is the Homing Vortex. Now, normally, you would expect the 960 into Homing Vortex, but this is just the plain Homing Vortex, so no 960, so he does suffer a bit of damage, but don't worry guys, he does make it up with this beautiful third strong attack because it is an 840 into 1080 radius charge AoE distant attack. For those of you guys that aren't familiar with this type of strong attack, it is the same third strong attack as 5th Anniversary Ichigo and the Machine Society Nemu. So this character is very stacked for when it comes to the overall strong attacks that he has and is by far a really great unit. Like if I were to even make a tier list, of all the Link Slot Potion characters, I would actually put him on top at number one, if I'm being 100% honest, despite having the uh, Homing Vortex on the second Tron attack, because he's just that damn good, if you guys ask me. And I feel like people hate on him too much because of the second Tron attack. Now, I can understand why for guild quests, because it kind of does suck, but everything else for when it comes to IT, Inheritance Zone, co-op content, he just does everything. Like, he does everything. So, where am I going to place this Shinsui, number one baby, number one of the mind characters, for now because we still have Shinji to go through, so yeah. Up next we have the one and only Spirits Are Forever With You version of Jushiro, and this character is a freaking god like Masaki, matter of fact, he just took her title as the Nad God himself, because look at what he has, he has Flurry, Guard Break, he even has the new multi-barrier skill. So that way, for when he uh, boosts and gives out barriers, he gives out 5 shields to himself and 3 to all of his other teammates. And not only that, he also has a bruiser of 40%, has the team party speed attribute Captain Normal attack damage by 20%, and also has a 20% normal attack damage link. This guy has by far the highest bruiser in the game, period as an actual uh, character that can boost and has guard break, and is by far one of the most broken characters that we have in the game. He's better than Tokinata, he's better than Masaki, he's better than any other Flurry character that we have right now, and is by far the best speed unit that we have in the game. People may even say that he's better than 5th Anniversary Byakuya, and to that end, I will not disagree, because it really comes down to personal preference if you guys like Byakuya over Jushiro or Jushiro over Byakuya, the only difference is that one is an SP based character and the other is an ad character. And he also has drain on everything, meaning that you can get away with this character and give him the Tsukishima link, plus give him full stamina damage boost upon getting him to T15, and each time he loses his health, you just have to rely on his uh, drain status element on his NAD and his strong attacks and you're good to go because this character can heal back up and also be able to 
basically kill off the mobs because this character is just amazing. Now the only thing where he doesn't shine so much has to be his strong attack so you will not be able to go for like a full hybrid build like Tokinata because he has the 18% mag pushback attack. SA2 is uh, the suction vortex. It's the same strong attack that Art Book Ichiko has on his SA1 and the same second strong attack as the uh, Canter Emerald Shuhei but it's okay and his full screen is the thousand radius. Like honestly if he were an SP character he would have sucked badly but this guy is a nad character so you can just basically ignore his strong attacks because you are mainly going to be using your strong attacks for protection if the mobs come close to you and decide to want to snipe you because you just use your strong attacks and there you go and even then he has the multi-barrier skill so for 20 seconds you do have five shields to protect you you're good to go because like this character once again he's just insane so where am i gonna classify him as a speed character bro i think this is pretty much obvious number one of speed he's literally the best of all the novel characters that we have right now in the game period now we're going to be moving on to the final characters being kisuke and shinji so starting it off uh with kisuke now this character actually had a bug that every time you would inflict a status ailment and gain the 80 percent spiritual pressure bug he would actually have a 100 percent guaranteed chance to proc laceration slash paralysis now they pretty much fixed it out so Kisuke is not as strong as he was before but this character is still by far one of the best power novel characters that we have in the game despite his SA1 because let's just take a look at him real quick. So for starters, Frenzy plus 1, Guard Break, Havoc at 20%, Berserker 40% and uh, in terms of the innate skills he is also immune to all status ailments and has read Soul Reaper dodges so he is pretty stacked and of course has the double status ailments. Now that being said, he did come out right after Bruno, and I mean by like a good month. So people that pretty much have summoned for Bruno either felt really bad for pulling for him or just feel good about it. I personally feel good about it because I have Bruno 305 and I do not need this PSK. But that being said, this status ailment spiritual pressure boost that he has is not just applying to the main SP, but literally the SP that you have built up on him. So if you have on him per se a badge, kill, and the T set all with 30% SP and the links are full on hybrid recharge slash strong attack damage links and all happen to be max transcended with 500 SP. This freaking skill alone is just going to be making Kisuke even stronger the moment he inflicts a status ailment. And when he inflicts the status ailment he'll get the spiritual pressure boost for 80% by, I think it was 10 seconds? I don't know. You guys will have to correct me in the comment section below because I do not have this character. I only showcased him, so I did not really keep into consideration for how long he actually had the spiritual pressure boost on. So yeah, thank you guys. And this character, he is basically like 5th anniversary Byakuya in terms of hit because he has the 18% mag pushback attack. Okay, pretty garbage. Like, that's all I gotta say. It's very garbage. But the SA2 is the 960 into homing vortex one of the best second strong attacks that we have in the game just because of the fact that it hits so hard at the beginning and then basically track the mobs oh they made it two hits this time instead of four hits but he does have guard break so it's not an issue and then his third strong attack is full screen a thousand two hundred radius it's just very good like i think he is very much up there with being one of the top five best powered units in the game. I don't think he's better than Bruno just because of the fact that he doesn't have bombardment or a sharpshooter, but the status ailment spiritual pressure boost at 80% is definitely keeping him up there to be one of the best power units that we have in the game period. He's just that damn good if you ask me. I personally do not need Kisuke because I'm literally stacked with Soul Reaper killers and have a match transcended, but like he is still a great unit regardless like i'm not gonna cap he is a great unit and if you guys have him congrats to you because this guy is actually number one all the power characters like he's better than shinji he's better than hikone like he may have that garbage sa1 but like everything that he has in terms of the stats and skills all make up for it final character of the list the spirits are forever with you version of shinji now they did a very interesting thing for when it comes to Shinji's second novel version because they gave him a very cool looking design which is basically similar to uh, Lunar Ichigo. 
But that being said, they changed a lot of stuff. So for starters, he hits harder, but his kit isn't as fast as the uh, Bankai Shinju. Now, whether this is going to turn you away from playing this character is really up to you. But personally, I don't mind it at all. It's quite the trade-off, but this character is in the Ronker field. So that's all I've got to really say. He's a mind Ronker killer, and he is literally stacked with skills despite not having Guard Break or Marauder because... Frenzy plus 1, Havoc at 20%, Berserker 40, Damage inflicted at full stamina by 20%, and has the Mind Attribute Captain Strong Attack Damage by an additional plus 20%. Dude, this character literally has the exact same multipliers as the Fierce Battle Grimjow, with the only difference that he has 5% less full stamina damage boost, but gets compensated by having weakening on everything he is crazy and i mean literally crazy he is by far the hardest hitting unit that we have for our mind in the game right now he hits harder than noel he hits harder than daddy ichigo to some extent do keep in mind that he doesn't boost like daddy ichigo but it's still up there and at what cost uh just the kit being exactly like bankai shuhei but this character is still stupidly stacked and it has to be one of my favorite characters overall and i do think he's better than candace now i'm going to be doing a who is better video between shinji and candace so i hope you guys do look forward to that but yeah as i said earlier the kit it's exactly the same as shuhei because he has a lunge on his sa1 his sa2 is the suction vortex 750 into 750 radius and then the third strong attack is 1200 radius full screen so like i don't have that much problems with the kit but i do feel like that instead of the lunge they should have given him a 3k length beam or instead of the 750 radius aoe in front they should have just given him the 960 radius and then i think this character would have been easily better than daddy ichigo and noel despite not having a marauder or nullify melee resistance because i feel like that would literally put him on top as by far one of the hardest hitting mind units that we have in the game but it is what it is like if you are a shinji fan you are going to be eating very good today because that character is just so goddamn good that's all i got to really say and uh yeah that's all i gotta say about this character now in terms of placing him uh this is gonna be quite difficult because he hits hard he hits insanely hard but would i really go as far as to put him above shinsui where shinsui has a better first and a better third strong attack and is just gonna be able to cover a lot more range Honestly, this is up for debate whether you guys think that Shinji is better than Shunsui or Shunsui being better than Shinji because Shunsui does have the better kit but has lower multipliers and has an ass SA2 while Shinji just has a way better second draw attack, way higher multipliers but it's just going to be clearing significantly slower than uh, Shunsui in this case. So if I'm going to be 100% honest, this is my opinion, I have to give the best mind spot to Shinji. I actually have to do it because I do think he's better than Shinsui for the damage he does. He's not going to be able to clear as fast as Shinsui, but like this character, if you get him, you are stacked as hell for IT. Like, I mean, literally, for when we get the mind IT where Aronkars are the enemies, this character is going to be your go to unit to use any day whenever that does come back. And if you do happen to get him 5 5, you can just basically use him for every IT. And expect him to do just as well as Daddy Ichigo and Noel, which is saying a lot because those multipliers do not miss a damn thing. But um, yeah, that's basically the uh, tier list summed up for Spirits Are Forever with you and Can't Fear On World. Now, do you guys agree or disagree with this list? You guys can basically leave out your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. You can even leave out some criticism. I will actually take it as long as as it's not to the point where I see that it's basically bad. That's all I got to really say about this. So, um, yeah, that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have actually enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that way you guys are up to date with my most recent videos. Now, am I going to be doing another tier list? Probably not anytime soon, but maybe maybe i'll do it for when we get the last seasonal banner of the year which should be christmas and then i'll basically do an all seasonal tier list 
for the entire year of 2021 since we did get so many goddamn good seasonal characters. If that does happen, do look forward to it. This has been your boy, the Dash Masher, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace out, lad. Oh,